Welcome everybody, Brother Goodwin here. Let me read a verse to you. We're going to continue our journey here through Revelation. We're, we, we, we left off in Revelation 17. We weren't quite done. We're going to finish that and jump right into 18 today. Uh, let me read two verses uh, at the end of chapter 17, verse 17 and 18. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill His will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast unto the word, uh, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. That's very interesting right there. God is in charge of some of this, isn't He? And uh, he, you know, he controls sometimes the, the, the will and decisions of who's going to lead these things. And, uh, and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. If you do not know what this great city is, you're, you're, you're still in kindergarten. Um, it's the Roman Empire, but it's not necessarily a physical place, although the roots of it are Babylon and Rome and other places. But, uh, all right, we're going to bring Doc in. We're going to continue our discussion here, uh, Revelation 17 and 18. Stand by. Hey everybody, we're so excited to have you with us today. Brother Goodwin here and Dr. Charles Hiltabiddle. We're having a time going through the book of Revelation <laughs> from chapter 1. Um, and by the way, Doc, uh, I don't know if people realize this. I don't know if we made it clear at the beginning. I was thinking about this in the, in the truck today. Revelation doesn't just cover the tribulation period. Oh no. It begins at the, at the beginning of the church age yeah. with the, the, the church of Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Of course, it gives us an introduction there yes. in chapter 1. But chapter 2 and 3 is the entire 2,000-year church age, mm -hmm. church age yep. which we're at the very final, mm -hmm. maybe the final months. I don't know. Yeah, we're, we're getting close. We could be in the final week, final month, final and year. Then it, and then, it, then it, the greater majority of it does cover the tribulation yeah. period. So chapter that's why everybody thinks it's what it's all about. Yeah. But then it moves into the millennial reign. So it's a thousand moves years into after. eternity belong. Yeah. You know, How long is that, Doc? How long is it? I don't know, man. That's going to be a long time. <laughs> Without end, I like. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, well, you got you had a few things you wanted to add to our yeah. discussion well, here. Well, we were, you know, there's so much to cover in Chapter 17. Uh, you might put up that uh, first slide because Chapter 17 and 18 is, this is kind of giving you a little picture of what uh, Chapter 17 and 18 is all about. Uh, the woman riding on a beast. It's the relationship between the two and uh, the emphasis that the religious uh, system is going to have in molding the thinking of the world uh, with, it, with that beast. The and, verse you got there, Doc, that's the one I read. I didn't even yep. realize that's what you had on that yep. slide. I know. And, and so, uh, uh, and the reason there's seven heads is because in chapter 17, ties back to chapter number 13, they go kind of together. Uh, and the seven heads, of course, are the Gentile kingdoms. I think I've got another slide uh, of the Gentile kingdom, now, if she can find it there. Can you go back to that slide real quick? I just want to point something out there. The woman writing that multi-headed beast, mm -hmm. I think seven-headed beast, that yes. woman is the religious system. That's the it's, system. It's the, church, it's the one yep. world, we call it the one world church. Right. And uh, that beast is the, the other beast in Revelation 13. Yes. There are two beasts. Yes. People get confused right. about this. Yeah, there's, there's next slide she had up there. There's the Antichrist that. and then there's yeah. the religious beast. Well, that's guy. what we had in chapter 13 was, was the Antichrist, the first beast, and the religious system and its leader is the second beast. And what I wanted to point out, she's already left the slide, but uh, that beast that she's riding is going to throw her off. Yes. After the middle of the trip, when he becomes God... Because there's no need more need, yeah. no more need for that system to push the Antichrist. Yeah. Now I have one more slide I want I want you to say. I know it won't be as easy to read, but um, is this I, the, I, yes. oh, this one? What we're looking at is the tribulation period, which is the final system, the final segment of Gentile rule. 
And, it, and the Bible says in the book of Luke, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And it's amazing here in chapter 17, 18, and even 19, we, we discover that, that the cup of God's indignation is now come to the full. Now explain to them, because you and I get it, the fullness of the Gentile, a lot of people don't understand right. that. Well, the reason is this. God allowed the Gentile rule under Nebuchadnezzar to take control over Jerusalem. Yeah. And even to this day, Israel is right now in all the problems that they're in with the wars over there are still limited by what the Gentile world yeah. limits them to. And so uh, what we're seeing is the formulation uh, of all of these phases uh, in chapter number two and chapter seven of the book of, Revela uh, of Daniel we talked about last time, those two images there, that's a picture of the entire Gentile rule. And so what we're doing is we're getting ready to come in chapter 17. We are coming now to the end of the tribulation period, but this is telling us that we're coming to the final phase of the seven different phases of Gentile rule. Now it's going to morph into an eighth one according to Daniel. That's that little horn that's going to come out and become the final leader. And he's the Antichrist. And so what the, what the purpose of all of this is about is the tribulation is to bring the Gentile rule to the fullness of the cup of God's wrath so they can pour it out at the Battle of Armageddon. And the second purpose and maybe the main purpose of, chap of the tribulation is to purify a third of the Jews because that's all that will live through the tribulation to go into the millennial reign. And so chapter 17 gives us a picture of all of this Gentile rule. Okay. And as uh, that beast. And so it's, it's all Babel, uh, the Babylonian yes. one world system yes. made up of two entities, the religious and the political and, and the commercial, commercial with it. And, but the religious one goes first and she, he becomes the religious guy. The religious system is for the promoting of God. Yep. Just like today in Christianity. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's a system, it's a relationship, but uh, what Christianity does through the Word of God and through the, uh, through the teaching of it and the doctrines, what's it do? It magnifies and pushes us toward Christ, yep. through Christ to a relationship with God the Father. Yep. And, and so that's what this religion is going to do. And Satan has his counterfeit. Yes. And he has his trinity. Satan represents Absolutely. God. The Antichrist represents Christ and the false prophets, the yep. Holy Spirit. Yep. And the Holy Spirit's pushing the Antichrist into ex exalting him and, and everybody that's bowing what, down to so him. So that's what this woman that's pictured in chapter 17 is all about. It's, the fi it's a final end time religion. I, I think personally that this wokeism that has engulfed the world today is going to be a major part of that because it, it, uh, it's it's feminism. It's, oh yes, it's, it's all effeminate. It's always been feminism. Yes, yeah. and that's the why the men are becoming women. Yeah, and <laughs> a millstone tied around her neck. Uh, I mean, cast into the into the abyss. All of this is symbolic, but yes, feminism. And you're watching even quote unquote Christianity today becoming more and more feminized. Yeah. And so uh, it won't be difficult when the rapture takes place to remove the, the church and the saints of God, that's going to change the how the Holy Spirit works. And the restrainer in us, which is the Holy yes. Ghost, is it's all we're going to be yeah. removed. It's going to be removed. And you can't imagine folks, the, the and, world that's going to be here. And the delusion that's going to sweep the world with nothing to hold it back. Yeah. 
And so the chapter 17, and there's a whole lot, and there's a bunch of wonderful notes, I think, that help people. We don't have time to go through all of them. Do you want to just summarize Well, some one of, of the things that's in there in chapter 17 is, is, the, is the ten kings, or um, anytime you find the word mountain or trees used in prophecy, it's always symbolic of nations. And so at some time, I believe during the first half of the tribulation, I don't know for how long, it says they're going to receive their, they're going to receive their authority or power uh, for a short time. But these, the world and somehow another is going to be divided into ten segments. Now, it might be, as you pointed out, and, and what you're getting ready to do in the live streaming on the return of Rome, it could be the ten major segments or nations that made up the Roman Empire. Or I believe that because it's more of a universal global thing, it's probably going to be these ten kings are going to represent ten segmentations of the world. And they, we pretty much have some of that in place we do. now. And many of, the, uh, uh, many of these elite movements out there, uh, Council of Rome and all of these other entities, Illuminati, seem to all have some kind of an idea of an end time or of a government of 10 segments yeah. somehow or another. Yeah. And you know, the thing about prophecy is, is God tells us what's going to happen, but he didn't give us all of the minute details yeah. of how that's so. So in chapter 17, we, we, we have the woman and the relationship with it. As you said a while ago, it goes all the way back to Babylon. Yeah. That relationship, and I don't think it is any coincidence that it would appear from historical research uh, uh, that uh, Simranius was probably the high priestess of the mystery religion that came out of Babylon. Yeah, because the Babylonian thing in Genesis 10 and 11 is, is, is political and religious. It is. The religious part yeah. has a woman... Yes, and and all just and, like Catholicism, and does. a lot of people, uh, Simeranius's picture is all over the world. Matter of fact, what we call Lady Liberty uh, outside there in New York, the standing, that is nothing but a replica of Simeranius, hmm. and, and her picture is all over the world in major buildings and major things like that statue in New York. And the political side of old Babylon was was one man leading it. One globalism. man leading it. And, yes. uh, and it's all going to come into fruition here. But what we're reading in 17 yeah. is the end of it. It's the end of it. Because it says, the cup of the fullness of his wrath has been now filled up. All right. God has allowed what started there to infect and affect the political and religious affairs of the world for 4,000 years. And it's finally coming to an end. And it talks about the blood of the martyrs. Yes. And, and that, that, that's a, a clue here but, as yes. to this entity, who this woman and, is. And he makes it clear in chapter 17 that, that, that those who are present, those prophets and, and those that, that were martyred, you're getting justice for what happened yeah, to and you. And those are the souls under the altar we see yes. in chapter 6, I think it is, or 5. Anyway. Five. You know, uh, they're going to get the full recompense of a reward. Yeah. How long, O Lord, for thou yes. avenge our blood on those yeah. who dwell in the earth? These are the martyrs yes. of, of the, the, the and Inquisition. This is, and, and this is showing because, folks, this 17 and 18 is an interlude and as we'll see probably in our next program, chapter uh, early verses of chapter 19 go with, with this. Yeah. This is, as you pointed out a while ago, God's in control. And God's, God's got the cup of His wrath. Okay. But He's waiting until it is full. That's why it ties back with that chart we looked at a while ago when the fullness of Gentiles come in. Yeah. And it all revolves around a statement you made in your early introduction. I, I think it was, it's all about Israel. Because when Nebuchadnezzar began and took over Jerusalem and destroyed mm -hmm. the first temple, that's when God started the time clock of Gentile rule. Yeah. Holding a cup, I suppose, so to speak, putting in all the things of the Gentile rule now since 
Nebuchadnezzar day, which was about 605 B.C. Uh, and so for, uh, for about 2,500 years, yep. God's got the cup of indignation and wrath for the Gentile rule. And, uh, and now whenever they break the last straw and they have come after the Jews hiding uh, in the last three and a half years, God said, okay, it's full. Now gather your army together at Armageddon. We'll settle this. Yeah. And I think I have this mapped out from, from Babylon to, you know, 605 B.C., somewhere yes. thereabouts to Israel becoming a nation again is somewhere around 2,520 years, yep. which is yes. the, the tribulation yep. of 2520. Yeah, just a coincidence. Just everything's just a coincidence, I well, guess. Well, in my Revelation study guide, I call Revelation 17 the fall of religious Babylon. Mm -hmm. Chapter 18 is the fall of political Babylon. The same Babylon, just different entities within it. Just like Babylon in chapter yeah. 10 of Genesis. They had the religious and the political. Yes. Let me just give a couple of lessons here. Uh, lesson number one, uh, and I have a whole series here. I have eight points that I, and I'm not going to give them into, in the show now why I believe that this entity is, is Roman and, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know Catholic, Catholicism. It, I, it, I got like eight points here. Because to back Catholicism that up. today is a modern update of yeah. the original Mysteries of Babylon. Yeah. But I'm going to, you can get the study guide and get there. We don't have but to, for, let me insert you got this. got something? Yes. Uh, my statement there, I have a four CD set on, on this. The first one is the historical understanding of Nimrod's world. Fantastic insight yeah. and study there. And then 17 and 18, uh, I think would, this is what you're talking about, what we're talking about here today, because it, the old is actually what we call now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right down to the, the, go, the golden chalices Everything. that they performed right the mass with and all that. Yeah. Yep. Um, a few lessons that I give. I always give lessons and application at the end of each chapter here. Judgment Day is soon coming for what the Bible calls the great whore, Revelation yeah. 17, 1. That's, that's, that's strong language, I realize, but that's mm -hmm. Bible language. That's what he calls this thing, the great whore. Number two, politicians court this great whore because of her wealth, power, and influence, 17, uh, Revelation 17, 2. Revelation 17, 4, the world's religion looks good on the outside, but is filthy on the inside. Number four, God makes it clear in Revelation 17, 5, uh, in bold print, that this great whore is the mother of all false religion and wickedness in the earth. She spawns them. And uh, yeah. I could go into a lot more detail on that, but yeah. we won't. Number five, the beast shall destroy the one world religious system once he has used it to achieve his objectives. And that's 16 and 17 here. And, uh, you know, and you can read that for yourself where he throws her off his bag. Mm -hmm. And we had the picture up a while ago on that. Um, how does this apply to me? Remember to love the sinner while hating the false religious system. Yep. Love the people, uh, but hate that system, that beast. Number two, are you in the public arena to some extent? And do you compromise your beliefs to earn the favor of the rich and powerful? I think that's what you were talking about mm -hmm. in our update. Uh, why it's so hard for preachers to turn around yep. and, and reverse their, their journey right. into apostasy and all that. Mm -hmm. it, it's hard to. Number next, are you on the inside? Uh, are you on the inside what you show to others on the outside? And I suppose nobody is perfectly what, what right. we appear to be to others. Well, that's why he's, he says, I can't remember exactly where it is in, in the text, but he says to come out of her. Yeah, it does say that, come out of her. Come out of yeah. her. So I, I, here's the thing, Dad. John is writing, I, I sometimes think there's a few inferences in there where it's like something sticks out and says, this is what's going to happen when that happens, but it, this system, is you need to come out of her. I had a guy texted me. I, I, he was up in Michigan. I forget his name. He said, I'm, I'm getting out of America because America is Babylon and the Bible says come out from her. He misunderstands, <laughs> he misunderstands the, the symbolic the reference symbolism. there. He's talking about get out of that system. Yeah. Don't, don't be a part of that. Well, if that's the case, is he going to move to Europe? I don't know. <laughs> then he'd be right into I it. I think he wanted to go to Israel. And, uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, uh, to, they got their problems too. <laughs> absolutely. Um, is your life influencing people for bad or for good? Amen. That's, that's number four. And number five, when the world gets all it can from you, it casts you aside. That's what the Antichrist does to the false prophet. That's exactly right. Gets all it right. can and throws it, throws it away. Yep. He becomes the religious 
He, and he becomes the he, Henry VIII, like yep. we talked about last like week. Like you talked about Henry VIII. Yeah, yeah, he becomes the head of state and the head of the church at that moment. And uh, history repeats itself. The, the, well, uh, folks don't realize, but but the inference in, in the Old Testament time was that Neb, Nimrod was seen as um, the first Assyrian. Now I want the spirit of Assyria. I'm going to put you on the spot. Can I put you on the spot? Uh, you do. I do it all the time. This is my closing statement here, and I, I want to see what I want to see what you what you what your your take on this because this is a shocking verse. This remember now, John in his mind is seeing these things from yep. heaven's point of view. He's got to be blown away. He sees this one world church. He sees Revelation five, Babylon, mm -hmm. the great mother of harlots, abominations of the earth. Look what he says here, and here's my statement here. Notice John's reaction to this one world church of the tribulation in verse 6. Uh, could it be that he is startled by how something that is called a church could deceive the world into thinking it's something good? But let me read it. I, I want your take on this, Doc. Now, here's John speaking after he sees this one world church and, yeah. and all that. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints... And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. No. Have you ever given any thought to that? He was just, he, he looked at it and he was just absolutely blown away. Yeah. That something that could have originally been so good and used of God is now so greatly polluted that it's used in such a manner. Look what the Lord says to him in verse 7. Yeah. And the angel, or not the Lord, the angel. angel. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I got that yeah. underlined. Yeah. I will tell thee the mystery of the woman yeah. and of the bee. In other words, sit down, yeah. John. Let me explain yeah. to you what that is. And, and in the end, in the explanation is, hey, judgment's coming. Yeah. But judgment's this coming. one world religious system with its golden chalices and tapestries hanging yep. from the walls, people walking around with crosses. Yep. Yep. They're powerful and they look so good. Yep. But yet it, it's the great whore that he talks about who commit fornication and martyred the... And as we pointed out last time, that wine, I'm convinced, is demonic. Yep. It's, it's the doctrines of demonic teaching. And boy, it has engulfed what's called today, I, I always use the parentheses, uh, Christ, Christianity, because modern Christianity is nowhere near biblical Christianity. Yeah. And it's because they have been drinking. And part of that latter day drinking is they don't know which Bible to get a drink out of. Yeah. Well, Doc, we've done two weeks on chapter 17, and I think well, we, maybe there's a lot we more got we could a few do. minutes because 18 just 18 gives a little more information. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, folks, before we do that, just real quickly, our bill is coming up real soon. Mm. We're not going to spend any time on it. Yeah. Um, God knows, and God knows what we need, and and God's in charge. If He wants us to stay on the air. God will touch somebody's heart. So uh, if you're one of our partners or maybe you've never given before, contact us, pray about it, and, and do Amen. what the Lord says. And, uh, you know, and if God wants to stay on the air here, um, God will provide. Um, so, Doc, that brings yep. us to yep. chapter 18, which is the same Babylon, the same end time entity, only and, it's, and it's it talks a about the destruction. Of it. Of the end time Let me just Babylon. read a couple of verses here. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen. I use that a lot. Yeah. Babylon, and I often yeah. say, America is fallen, is fallen. Um, people are always asking, where's America in the Bible? I believe the system of Babylon is headed yeah. up in the beltway. It is at the moment. I, I don't, I, I, you see it stronger than I do there. I, I agree with you that that's where it's seated right now. Yeah. But uh, folks, if, if this next coming election goes the way the devil wants it to go, uh, I can see where everything in America will be crashed and your Roman Empire is going to take over. Yeah. But, uh, and right now that Roman Empire, that the revised system yep. is being controlled by right here. Yep. 
And if but we it, haven't seen anything in the last three years, we've seen that. We've, we've seen, seen the, it and the deception and we the can wickedness see that of our and, government. But we can see how easily a system could be moved from one place to another. And Babylon here is talking about the system of it. Now, verse 4 talks about, come out of her, my people. There's yeah. that, that verse I was That's talking about. I think I thought it was in mm -hmm. 17, but... Uh, but just look at some of the things that give oh. you a, a clue here as to the end, who we're talking about. Verse 11, and the merchants of the earth shall weep yep. and mourn over her. That's when the smoke is rising over this, <laughs> this city that uh, we see in verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And then the merchants of the world begin to weep. Right. And you can see it down there in verse 15. The merchants of those things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city. Now, when I read through this chapter, I see America. I see what Amer that America has been the, the milk cow of the world. We still are. Now, we're broke, but we're still we're sending we, money around the globe. We are, but again... It is a system, yeah. and any system can easily be headquartered in your That's way. right, sure. Yeah. And, and I, you see America in and the I, Bible stronger I, than I do. And I say in my, in my book where I write about this, mystery, uh, you know, yeah. The Mystery of Babylon, mm -hmm. I make a quote in there, and I say, think of Babylon not as a place, but as an, uh, a system. And, and, but here's something we have to see when we're studying and we'll pick it up here next time. But when you're studying it, the, the greater majority of the book of Revelation is signs and symbols yep. And, yep. and symbolic uses. But then whenever he comes along and makes certain statements like the city and smoke, these things are literal. And we'll, we'll pick it up next time because we don't have time here. But there are both... In well, maybe chapter, they'll let us extend into the next half hour. We'll chapter, keep going. chapter 18 and 19 go together. And what, what we're looking at is a, a great city. It says a city. And it says the smoke of the city. And it makes it clear that it's not the same city because, uh, as Jerusalem because Jerusalem is going to be parted into three parts uh, and all of the other yeah. cities are going to be destroyed. Look at verse 19. A lot in, in the middle of it. Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all yep. that had ships in yep. the sea by reason of her costliness. Yep. For in one hour she is made desolate. That's what I say. It's, it's hard sometimes uh, to differentiate is the city something that's literal, or is the city being used figuratively? Yeah. We'll pick that up next yeah. time, because I, I have some things that I think will help yeah. with that. And it is interesting, if you go to Google Earth on your phone, type in the word Babylon, you'll be shocked. There's only two Babylons in all of Google Earth. One is in Iraq. One is in New York City. <laughs> yeah, I got a picture of the sign, Welcome to Babylon, yeah. New York. And uh, anyway, interesting stuff. Well, folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Until then, keep your eyes on them skies.